Well, if you can believe it, it is almost time to change the clocks. They'll be springing forward this Sunday at 2 a.m., meaning we'll all be losing an hour of sleep. So does this really impact us? And if so, how? Well, our next guest is here to explain it all. Dr. Henry Monka is a neuroscientist and the CEO of Posit Science. Thanks for joining us today, doctor. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. So, you know, on the one hand, with daylight saving time, we are gaining an extra hour of daylight. That is amazing, but we're also losing an hour of sleep. So how does missing 60 minutes of slumber actually impact a person? You know, a lot of people have the wrong idea about sleep. You know, a lot of us have the viewpoint that um, because we are uh, using, because we're not doing anything during sleep, we think it's an unproductive time. And uh, so we, you know, we think, hey, it's okay to lose some sleep. It's okay to stay up late at night and so forth. But you know, as a neuroscientist, uh, I can say that that's really not the case. Um, sleep's actually incredibly important for our brains. And in fact, our brains are incredibly busy during sleep. Um, and as a result of that, it's important to get a good night's sleep and daylight savings time has got some, some concerns for those of us who think about brain health. Um, you know, here's a couple things that your brain's doing while you're sleeping, just so you know. The first thing your brain does while you're sleeping is it actually rehearses everything you've learned during the day. So everything that we talk about right now, Miranda, if you're going to remember it tomorrow and I'm going to remember it tomorrow, it's because our brains are going to replay it while we're sleeping and push it into long-term memory that way. So sleep's important. The other thing that happens while we sleep is our brain actually cleans itself. Our brain, as you might know, kind of floats in a little bit of salty water inside of our skull, and that, that gets cleaned out at night while we're sleeping so we can start the day fresh. So these are two great reasons why sleep's important and missing an hour of sleep is not, not trivial. So wouldn't a simple solution be for people to just jump into bed an hour earlier, or does that actually throw off one's sleep cycle and that in itself has a negative impact? Yeah, that's a great question. You think, hey, why don't we just get ahead of this? If I'm usually going to bed at 10, I'll just go to bed at 9. This will take care of itself. But as most of us who've tried that know, it just doesn't quite work. And the reason that is, is because if you have established a regular bedtime, and you should, because that's important for sleep, it's actually hard to change that regular bedtime. Sleep is a, it's a learned habit. And like any other habit, it's hard to move it around a bit. So most people, if they just try to go to bed an hour earlier, are not actually going to get an extra hour of sleep unfortunately. So it's very hard to shift that. And in fact, what studies show is that the average person loses about 40 minutes of sleep when we start um, uh, daylight savings time as we're about to do. We don't make up that deficit. We go to bed at about the same time. And because most of us have jobs or school, we just have to get up earlier the next day. And losing that 40 minutes or an hour of sleep, it has measurable impact on our, our brain health and our overall health. And so what are some of those impacts, Henry? What are the effects of a person losing you know, 60 minutes or 40 minutes of sleep in their regular sleep cycle? You know, it doesn't sound like much, does it? No. Uh, but sleep is so important for our brain that it has very broad ranging effects. The brain actually controls just about everything about you, right? We think of it that, well, hey, our brain's for thinking, but our brain actually controls our entire body. And so when our brain gets a bit off by missing an hour of sleep, all kinds of our bodily systems get off. So there's some pretty obvious things, right? It's pretty clear that traffic accidents go up after daylight savings time start. You're just a little bit more tired. And for a few of us, that's going to mean an accident on the road. Um, but other health effects change as well. It's pretty clear, for example, that heart attacks go up after missing that hour of sleep, um, and particularly in older people where sleep is very important. Uh, and so just all kinds of things like that change in the first few days after daylight savings time um, because the brain is off a bit and it controls all these systems. And I think the question that, you know, uh, many of us ask as neuroscientists, as brain health specialists is, hey, are the purported gains of whatever we're supposed to be getting out of daylight savings time, are they worth it? You know, if we can see these effects in our health system, if we can see these effects on the road, um, hey, why are we really doing this after all these years? Yeah, it's a great question. We were speaking about this, you know, with my colleagues in the newsroom. Not all of Canada actually observes daylight saving time, which I'm sure is the same case in the United States. There are certain provinces and territories that just say, hey, we don't want it. So maybe in the future, that's going to change. Um, but for now, you know, most of Canada does observe it. And as we both know, it's been a very heavy past two years. We're still living in a pandemic. And now with the war happening in Ukraine, there is a lot of general stress and anxiety given the state of the world right now. So I'm wondering, you know, how will this compound the negative effects of daylight saving time? 
Will it? Well, you raise a very interesting point. And, um, you know, in, 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 in normal times, when we think about brain health, you know, you can have a certain, you know, change to your brain health and bounce back, right? You can absorb a certain amount of stress at work because it's going to get better. You can absorb a certain amount of bad news. Maybe you've had a bad event in your family or your personal life. Um, you can absorb a certain amount of missing sleep. But what we now understand about brain health is that, um, you know, there's a certain amount you can absorb that's sort of a cumulative amount. And after that, we start to really start to see these deleterious effects. It's sort of like we've pushed over the threshold of what the resilience of our brain can endure. And for that reason, it's really important to, um, you know, avoid these hits to brain health that, that maybe are avoidable, like missing sleep and things like that. Exactly as you say, we have the ongoing stress of COVID. Many of us have been through a two-year lockdown period. Um, you know, we have this terrible news from Ukraine. All of these things start to add up in terms of negative brain, uh, brain health, and they make us more vulnerable to certain brain health events that occur. So, for example, we know that people are, um, you know, more vulnerable over time to the onset of dementia or the onset of mood disorders like depression or the onset of negative effects after a head injury if they have a lower amount of overall brain resilience. So as a society, we really should be looking at ways to increase our average brain resilience. So when these inevitable negative exterior effects happen, we have the brain resilience to put up with it. And so we have to look at something like daylight savings time and say, hey, are we just adding one more stress to our poor brains at a time where, you know, many of us, I think, have really had enough stress for our brain health. And we know that the effects of all these things have added up to our on our cognitive performance and our work performance and our life performance. Um, and so we look at the next few days as we head into daylight savings time and say, hey, is this really worth it? All right, doctor, thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate your insight. I hope you get enough sleep this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you do as well. Thank you for having me. Thank you. That's neuroscientist Dr. Henry Monka.